As I look at the 82, 83, and 84 seasons, um, and I look at about, try to think about it and, and what's about to happen if I look back. 82, of course, culminated in our first national championship, so that's got to be one of the most memorable seasons, if not the most memorable season we've ever had. And then you have a couple of seasons which were a little bit disappointing in, uh, in 83 and 84. But the thing I think that uh, as you look at these, these years and you think about them, and you look back to the tradition of Penn State, 83 and 84 really were uh, years where we're building to get our football team ready to uh, make another championship effort in the, uh, in, in the next volume you see uh, four years from now. For almost 100 years, Penn State has been a symbol of excellence in college football. Typical of that tradition has been the last 10 years. Hello, I'm Jimmy Cephalo. Welcome to Volume 3 in our series, Great Moments in Penn State Football. Coach Joe Paterno and I will help you relive the years 1982 through 1984, a period that included Penn State's first national championship. There were four first-team All-Americans on that 1982 squad. Two offensive backs were picked in the first round of the NFL draft, and Joe Paterno was named Coach of the Year. Coach, the Lions had come close several times to finishing number one. Did you think 1982 was going to be the year? Going into the 1982 season, uh, we kind of figured we were going to have a legitimate chance to win a national championship. We had, we had great people in the key spots. We had a, a, a big league quarterback who eventually was a number one draft pick, Todd Blackledge. We had a number one draft pick at the tailback spot. We had a great wideout in Kenny Jackson, a big league tight end in Mike McCluskey. We had a good solid offensive line and a very alert, aggressive defensive football team coming back. So we had, and our kicking game was solid. So the only thing that concerned us was how difficult the schedule was going to be. And, and it proved that, proved to be very difficult. First on the schedule, the Temple Owls, a team that had given Penn State some scares in recent years. The Lions had won by 1 point in 75, 1 point in 76, 3 points in 78 but now it was the championship season. We started out against Temple, and for a change, we won it easily. We didn't have a, we, we scored, I think, the first three or four times we, had a, we got the football. It was Penn State's passing game that led the way. The first score came with less than six minutes gone. Blackledge looking to throw, and he'll throw the screen. It is cut by Warner at the 40, at the 30, He's got the it. 20. Makes a cut at the 10. And a Penn State touchdown. Blackledge threw two more touchdown passes in the first quarter, including a 31-yarder to Kevin Ball. The Lions passed for 152 yards in the first half while rushing for only 10. In the fourth quarter, the Penn State defense gave the Lions another opportunity. First down and 10 yards to go. Temple with Reardon being chased and sacked inside the 25-yard line by Scott Radisson. Nine minutes left in the game. Penn State 24, Temple 7. Temple with the ball at their own 23, second down, long yardage, 25 to go. And a fumble on the snap, and I believe Penn State has recovered the ball at about the 22. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Walker Lee Ashley who came up with the loose football. Blackledge took the Lions into the end zone with his fourth touchdown pass of the day, which set a new school record. The final, Penn State 31, Temple 14. And then we had a great football game with Maryland. I think the Maryland game is uh, one of the most exciting offensive games we've ever been in. Blackledge had a super day, 
and they had a kid by the name of Boomer Ierson, a left-hander from Long Island, who, who threw really well. So it was a back-and-forth, high-scoring game. Slot to the left. Fake, and Esiason rolls. He's looking, Adam. man wide open! Davis, touchdown, Maryland! Russell Davis wide open and a 51-yard touchdown pass from Boomer Esiason to Russell Davis. Watch this. This is a beautiful play. A little flake of a counter with a rollout action. Throws the Penn State secondary. Here's Davis coming across on a post. Wide open, perfectly thrown football. Six points, and Maryland is certainly back in this game. Maryland had a one-point lead, but the running of fullback John Williams put the Lions back in scoring position. First down and 10, Penn State near the 44-yard line. Williams again, the sweep. He's got a lot of room, 50, 45, to the 40. He's going to go, 30, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line. That's great running, but again, Rocky Washington made the key block. Williams. 50 yards rushing, averaging more than six per carry. Again, the slot to the right side. Fake to Williams. Blackless throwing man wide open. Washington touchdown! Great catch, great call. That's Greg why they Garrity. Him. Garrity wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. Well, this is a great call. They fake Jonathan Williams up the middle. It's a great catch. The ball is thrown behind Garrity. He's on a quick post from his outside position, and he makes a stupendous catch. Blackledge's fourth touchdown pass of the game was to Kenny Jackson early in the fourth quarter. The Lions needed the points because Maryland's Esiason wasn't done yet. He finished with 276 passing yards and two touchdowns of his own, but Penn State hung on to win 39-31. The next week against Rutgers, Todd Blackledge again threw for four touchdowns. The most spectacular play, however, came on a Rutgers punt. The Lions defenders were watching for a fake. Here's the kick, looking for the corner. Mark Robinson, he's got a hole, here he goes. He's got one man to beat and blockers ahead. The 40, he's gonna go. Mark Robinson is gone for a touchdown. And there are no flags on the field. That was for 92 yards, Stan. Penn State went on to win 49-14. But the assignment was much tougher the following week. Portable lighting was installed at Beaver Stadium for the nationally televised showdown against Nebraska. I suppose when I get old and start to think back about some of the great football games we've been involved in, uh, certainly the Nebraska game, uh, from 82 has got to be one of them. There's just so many great plays. Uh, it was a game uh, that we won in the, in, in, in the very last seconds of the game after Nebraska had made a great drive of its own to score with about a minute and 30, 35 seconds to play. First down, 10 yards to go. Gill keeping, pitches out, Rozier's got it. He's the five, and he's down to the three-yard line. Oh, my, what a play by Turner Gill. Well, that was phenomenal football. We waited to the last minute, got the pitch off. This is why Nebraska is a great offensive team. Let's take a look at it. They pull the guard. Watch Hamilton come up. There's the pitch. The corner got a caught a little wide, and Robinson missed the tackle, and Nebraska's right on the goal. Third down and goal. They need a, they need a penetrating type of a play here. Quarterback he didn't sneak. get in. He got in. Touchdown, Nebraska. He got in. They rolled. He got in. And for the first time, Nebraska has taken the lead. 23-21. 1-18 to play. And the kickoff return here is absolutely critical. Seibel kicking off. It's deep. Foul. Five yards deep will stay in there. No time goes off the clock. That's a very cool football player right there. And there's a 15-yard penalty on someone, I hope. Personal foul, Nebraska. Well, 
That'll march it up 15 to 35. Penn State has two timeouts left. Looking for field goal position, maybe even a chance to win it. Three wide receivers. Kevin Bow is in the game. Slot right. Blackledge to throw. He dumps it off. Got some room. Nichols, 40, 45, and he's out to the 50-yard line and down to the 48-yard line. The clock will stop on the first down. It'll be a 15-yard game and a first down for Penn State. All right, good call. Nebraska drops a lot of people off. He's got all time, dumps it off to Nichols, makes a good inside cut, gets a good block from McGinnis, good block from Garrity. Blackledge looking again. He's got a man up on the sideline. Bow's got it. He's hit, and it's incomplete. He dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. So the clock will stop with 57 seconds to play. The gain would have been seven. It is no gain, obviously. It is second down and ten. Once again, Stanley, what's going through Joe Paterno's mind is whether he's going to go for the tie or the win. If he's just going to go for the tie, if he hits something down and across the middle, I'm sure he can get in field goal range. Possibly you get a lucky break, you could go all the way. But it's very difficult as a coach to decide what you want to do after you played a ball game like this. Second down and 10. Blackledge. Looks, fires, got a man wide open, it is caught at the 32-yard line. First down, Penn State. Kenny Jackson makes the reception, and the Nittany Lions have a first down. He got out of bounds, that's important. I know that this is a hurry-up offense. The auto ball eyes everything on the line of scrimmage. Probably try to get a post over the middle. We're going to have to have some, some precision uh, uh, blocking by the offensive line and precision pass route. Well, you've got a lot of time. 52 seconds and two timeouts. They Penn might stay at the 33-yard line of Nebraska. Might go to the draw. There it is. It is a draw. Nowhere. Nowhere. A loss of one. They tried to catch him, and Penn State will use a timeout. Like right, you've that. got one timeout in 35 seconds, so you still have time to pick up your first down. Well, you got, you got, you got only got 11 yards to make, and they're giving him a lot of inside stuff. They got the one first down. He should go for a curl type of a pattern to the inside. Now here, here, here it is. He's got him. He's, he's got, got him at open. He's got and he's caught for first down to 21. Timeout. Timeout. Penn State timeout with 28 seconds to play. He's got the first down. He's got it. Kenny Jackson, he's got the first down to 21. But again, that was great. Is what we said. They ran to the curl. He got the first down. He gave him a little room. They're afraid of the touchdown. Okay, he's got the first down. Now, he's got 28 seconds. The clock is stopped. You got to figure that he can no longer get, can only get possibly two plays off or a field goal. Oh, come on. You got to be kidding. They did not give him forward progress where he caught the ball. He's got it anyway. Now, actually, that helped Penn State because now Penn State is going to be able to come to the line of scrimmage with a play called and get it off. Right. They still have one timeout remaining. First down and 10, Penn State at the 23-yard line. Could be the tight end up the, up the gut, up the middle, that they're going to. They're worried about the wideouts here, Stan. As you can see, Blackledge looking. He can run the ball if he wants. Run it out of bounds. Run it out of bounds. And he does. He gets out of bounds to the 15-yard line. Well, but he used up a lot of time. He, that play was stopped at 28. He used up 15 seconds. He got to the, let's see where they mark it, 17-yard line. It'll be second down and five. But the downs are no longer important. They've got 13 seconds left. They still have one timeout remaining. And at the, 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 this, at this particular time out, running out of bounds, He's got time for one more play and possibly a field goal if that's what he wants to do. But I don't know. I know my brother. I know Joe. I think he'll go for the win. If they can get something, a post down across the middle, might pull it out. Blackledge back to throw. He's, He's open. Got He's got a man open and his cut at the two-yard line. Nine seconds to go. He's out of bounds at the two-yard line. With the one pass. timeout left, Stan. He's got a timeout. But at this particular situation, one running play 
will terminate the ball game. They almost have to throw the ball, come up with something like a rollout type of a situation, and try to get the ball in the end zone. Well, now, we talked about being further upfield and going for a field goal. Now it is first down at the two-yard line. Nine seconds to play. I think they'll put Williams in motion and run that sweep that they've done before. Here it is. All right, Williams goes to a wing left. He's going to come in motion. And Mumford. Here comes Williams' motion to the near side. Here's Blackledge rolling. He's looking. He's throwing. Touchdown! 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 the same play that they hit in the first half. I, I gotta say, I called it. But my point is, they deserved it, Stan. Listen he deserved to it. Listen and look at this crowd. They deserved it, Stan. They didn't go for the field goal. Oh, my. A 65 yard. Hey, what's the fake? What Todd Blackledge is a candidate for the Heisman Award. Kurt Bowman makes his second touchdown. And who is Kurt Bowman? He never played tight end before. Look at Joe. Joe Bertano. Look at Joe. Look at him. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Dan, have you ever seen a better college football game? Absolutely not. We have some couple of controversial calls. A lot of Nebraska fans think we expanded the sideline to let McCluskey catch the football <clears throat> inbounds. And a lot of people don't know whether we caught a touchdown pass inbounds. But that's, uh, I'm, but in any case, uh, we won that football game, and then we knew we were, uh, we were for real. But then we had to get out and play Alabama. The game was in Birmingham, and it did not start off well for Penn State. Single safety back for Alabama. And the kick is blocked. Alabama quarterback Walter Lewis took the ball into the end zone himself, and the Tide had the early lead. But Todd Blackledge brought the Lions right back when he checked the defense and called an audible. Second down and three yards to go. Penn State near their own 31. They are in a wing to the left. Blackledge over the middle. Man, what a ball! He's going for And then late in the game when we were starting to make our drive, uh, Ralph Giacomaro, who was our punter, we're going to get some uh, Irish punters one of these days, uh, went back to punt and actually one of our kids backed up into him and blocked our own punt and they went in and, and scored after that. So, uh, you know, you give up two touchdowns on two kicking plays. Ordinarily, you're not even going to be in a football game. That's right. That's the way it turned out. Daryl White back deep at his own 12. Now here's where you need Giacomaro to give you the big punt. Oh, he, he kicks it into his own man. Oh, no. He kicked it into his own man. Oh, my goodness. He kicked it into his own man. And that's the ball game right there. What happens? Number 35, Stutter, can replace a Robinson. Step back into the punt. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible break for Penn State. It takes a miracle now for Penn State to get back in this ball game. Watch him. You see him move right back into the punt? He walked right into the punter. Unbelievable. And Alabama is about to pick up another gift. Following Alabama's touchdown and two-point conversion to lead 35-21, Penn State has the ball. It is intercepted. It is intercepted. Rocky Colburn or Eddie Lowe, the linebacker, it's a touchdown. Eddie Lowe, it's all over. The game ended with a score. Alabama 42, Penn State 21. And then after that, we just had to suck it up and say, hey, we got to win every one of them. And I remember the kids getting together and say, hey, we're going to win every game right now. 
and they still got a chance to win a national championship, and that's what they did. And ended up winning the, the rest of them. The rest of the season started with the homecoming game against Syracuse. This game also marked the awakening of the Lion defensive unit. For example, Dave Pappenroth made two interceptions in the first quarter. Dorley back to throw. He rushed out of there, and now he's going to throw, and it is intercepted! Dave Pappenroth with the interception, and he's brought down at the Syracuse 34 yard line. Watch to the right this time. Over the middle, and it is intercepted by Penn State. Dave Pappenroth makes his second interception of the game. And Mike Zordich's sack pushed Syracuse out of effective field goal range. Tailback Kurt Warner had his first 100-yard rushing game of the season, capped by a 34-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter. The final, Penn State 28, Syracuse 7. Morgantown, West Virginia rolled up 382 yards in total offense. But Penn State's big play defense kept the Mountaineers off the scoreboard. In the fourth quarter, the Lions led 10-0, but West Virginia was threatening. Linebacker Scott Radisek stopped the threat. His 85-yard interception return put the game out of reach. Penn State shut out West Virginia 24-0 for their 24th straight win over the Mountaineers. The next game was at Boston College. Again, the opposition piled up the yardage. 656 yards of total offense. BC quarterback Doug Flutie passed for 520 yards in the game. Even though we were well ahead most of the game, we never felt comfortable because Doug would either throw the ball downfield or he's a big player or he'd run around back there and make something happen. So it got to be a very exciting football game. But again, the Lion defense came up with the big plays. Radisak intercepted Flutie late in the first quarter. That led, early in the second quarter, to a Penn State touchdown. Here come the Nittany Lions out of the huddle. First down and 10 at the Boston College 12. Play fake. Blackledge looking all the time. In the end zone, it is caught for a touchdown. Greg Garrity with the touchdown catch, sliding along the turf, and Penn State has scored again. 618 yards total offense of their own. The Lions outscored the Eagles 52-17. It was another high-scoring game the following Saturday as Penn State shut out North Carolina State 54-0. The Lions were now 8-1. They still had to face three teams, though. Notre Dame at 6-1-1, Pittsburgh 7-1, and a bowl game opponent, probably undefeated Georgia. Joe Paterno said that Penn State was now in the three-game playoff for the national championship. And the first of those games would be Penn State's first ever visit to Notre Dame Stadium. The Lions took advantage of two Notre Dame fumbles to take the lead in the second quarter. Slight angle to Gansitano's right. Ball's down. Kick is up. It is good. Nick Gansitano with a 29-yard field goal. Penn State, with their second field goal of the quarter, has taken a 13-7 lead. 1.41 to play in the second quarter. There is Alan Pinkett, who has come close to breaking a couple. Massimo Mike to kick off for Penn State. Triple safeties with Ballage and Stone. But Pinkett is the deep man in the middle. Here's Mike's kick. High, but again a bit short. At the 7 is Pinkett. Outside to the 20. The 30. Still on his feet. The 50. He's going to go all the way. Forget it. Alan Pinkett is gone. That was a great run. And boy, does he have speed. A 93-yard kickoff return by Alan Pinkett. Notre Dame had the lead at halftime. Obviously, Notre Dame, Penn State, it's got to be a big game for you, especially when you're late in the year and you're, you're on your way, hopefully, to a shot at a national championship. And we had to play very well in the last quarter in that football game. We, we scored 11 points to come from behind 
against a very determined Notre Dame team. And uh, I think our team showed its championship character in that game. I think they were down and uh, they knew everything was at stake and uh, they, they, they came out of it and, and did the things they had to do in the fourth quarter to win it. First and 10, Penn State at the Notre Dame 48. Short drop, over the middle, Warner's wide open. Good he time. will not be caught, touchdown, Kerr Warner, Penn State. That's the check off we've been looking for. He was open in the first half, they didn't see him. This time, Black was checked off, caught Warner one on one. He just outran the linebacker, and it's six points. George, is that the same check off they used against Alabama for the 69 yards? Exactly yarder? the same. Whoa. 80 yard drive, just like that. Then the last time Penn State kicked off, they got in big trouble. Here's Manka. Kicks it straight away, and it's coming right to, I oh no, it's coming to Ballage. His knee touched at the one-yard line. He's down at the one-yard line. Now watch the Penn State defense. They, this is a big opportunity here for them to put the ball game possibly away. They will come. You bet your life they will come. Let's see if Notre Dame tries to grind it out. They are going with a double tight end offense. First and 10 at their own one-yard line. Take it. He's hit. He's thrown for a safety. They had to come with him. They had him on a six-inch yard line. The two points is what they really wanted. And Penn State came across the line of scrimmage almost free. Walker, Lee Ashley got the penetration and made the hit. Kurt Warner now with 90 yards on 21 carries, heading for his 16th 100-yard game. And remember, Penn State has never lost when Kurt Warner's gained 100. Five and a half to play. Second down and eight at the 40. Warner. You got it. It's outside. Goodbye. Kurt Warner, there's no one to beat. 30, 20, makes the move and slips and falls at the 15-yard line. They blitzed the corner back, and he got caught. That set up a Nick Gantchitano field goal, and the Lions win the first game of their three-game playoff, 24-14. You know, as we came to the pit game in 82, uh, as you start to work your way down closer and closer to that national championship, every game gets awfully tough and big. Uh, and uh, nobody lets you have anything easy, and Pitt didn't let us have anything easy that day. It was, we were behind at halftime. Uh, Pitt elected to receive the football, and we kicked off, and we had the wind at our back. And uh, Lion punter Ralph Giacomaro used that tailwind to boom a 50-yard punt down to the pit eight. When it came down for the Panthers to punt, they could manage only a 32-yarder into the win, and Penn State had good field position. Second down and 11, 8.40 to play in the third quarter. Blitz, Blackwood's back, he throws over the middle, he's got his man, Blackwood, and he gets it! That gave the Nittany Lions a 10-7 lead. Our defense just took over the football game then. Uh, we didn't let Pitt have anything the second half and we, we went in and we won it. Defense set up two Penn State field goals that gave the Lions a nine point lead. Penn State 19, Pitt 10. We did in the Notre Dame game. We came from behind and, and played very tough football with a lot of pressure on us. And I think those were the things that, that, that indicated to me that we were a national championship football team, beating clubs of that caliber the way we did. But to indicate to the rest of the world that they were a championship football team, the Lions had to do it one more time. Went down in the Sugar Bowl and played one of the great Great football games I've ever been involved in as far as a, a team playing very well with a lot of pressure on it. Uh, and, and we beat Georgia and, and uh, won the first national championship we ever got credit for at Penn State. The Lions took the open kickoff 80 yards in seven plays, and Blackledge completed four out of four passes. 
Warner swept left end for the score less than three minutes into the game. Later, a punt return and a pass set up Warner's second touchdown. And Nick Gancitano's 45-yard field goal put Penn State on top 20-3 in the second quarter. But Georgia passed for a touchdown before halftime, and Herschel Walker added another at the start of the third quarter. The Bulldogs got only two first downs the rest of the game, however. Todd Blackledge put it out of reach when he completed a 48-yard scoring pass to split end Greg Garrity. And the Nittany Lions were number one for real. Warner and Todd Blackledge, as most people know, were roommates for four years at Penn State. They were, they were great friends. Uh, Todd has often described Kurt as the brother he never had. Uh, Todd and his family were great for Kurt. Uh, but they were both unusual individuals, very individual in their outlook on life, but yet have found something in each other that made both of them stronger. What we need to survive together alive Ebony and ivory Live together in perfect harmony Side by side on my piano Keyboard, oh Lord, why don't we
think three season was disappointing to a degree because we had won a national championship in 82 and there were a lot of uh, high expectations but we didn't have our quarterback situation straightened out early and I'll take the blame for that I didn't make a decision early enough uh, uh, between Doug Strang and some other people who were, were competing then and we had to open up with Nebraska in the kickoff classic first time that game was, had been played uh, Nebraska had felt that when we beat them in 82 that uh, maybe there had been some questionable uh, official calls. I think Nebraska felt they were a better team than we were in 82 and that they had lost the national championship because the officials had given McCluskey a catch that he didn't have and what have you. And they, they were ready to play and they really demoralized us. They, they beat us 44 to 6 or something like that and uh, it was just it was a terrible experience to go through and I it took us a while to recover from that it really did 12 days later the Cincinnati Bearcats shocked the Lions 14-3 Penn State used three quarterbacks and committed five turnovers we lost to an Iowa team in a high scoring duel and a lot of people didn't realize how good Iowa was that early in the year Penn State freshman D.J. Dozier rushed for 102 yards against Iowa. The following week at Temple, he gained 107 as the Lions finally got into the win column with a 23-18 victory. And at Rutgers, it was Dozier rushing for 196 yards in a 36-25 win over the Scarlet Knights. First down, 10. Dozier. He breaks it. 40. He's gone. Good no one will catch him. 20. 10. 5. Touchdown. D.J. Dozier. 50 yards and a touchdown. I'm constantly having to watch the words I use when I talk about Preston being eligible to play. Basically, I don't like Preston playing. Uh, but I, then I get a, I have to go back to the Kenny Jacksons and the, and the Kurt Warners and certainly and Jimmy Suffalo, and I certainly have to put DJ Dozier in there as one of those precocious freshmen who can who are ready to play the minute they hit the college campus. DJ would be poor, poised, uh, great running instincts, great ability, and uh, had a, a super year for us as a freshman. I think he's the first freshman we ever had to run for a thousand yards. started to, to get a little confidence back uh, I think we, we, we played we played better we were we were pretty good at the end of the year and I think part of it started probably with the Alabama game the Alabama game we, we won although we were hanging on we were way ahead 31 to 6 or something but we hung on and Alabama had a chance to score at the end after Penn State played near perfect football for three quarters Alabama scored three times in the fourth quarter and was threatening again Lewis in the flat, wide open. It is caught by Chandler. He's down to the 13-yard line, and there is absolutely no stopping Alabama. Hamilton, Harry Hamilton, made the tackle, but the gain is seven. The clock runs with 1.20 to play. Alabama still with two timeouts left. Time is no longer a factor. The only factor is, will Penn State have enough time to come back and get a field goal if they need one? Second down and two. Pitch wide to good. First down and goal at the Penn State six yard line. 38 seconds to go. The clock will stop on the change of the chains. They ran the same plays they ran before. That's true when he closed a little late. Come up a little late, could have forced a little bit, but the corner was kicked out. 32 seconds, Alabama with one timeout left. Lewis, no rush at all. Look at it. In the end zone and out of bounds. Incomplete. Second and goal. 22 seconds to play. Lewis, rush. He throws in the end zone and it is incomplete. It was almost a touchdown to Joey Jones. Well, they put the rush on him and it made him throw a little too soon. They might come right back to the same play. I don't, so they, I don't think they'll run it. That's why they should help out on the corner a little bit. Third and goal. Lewis. He's rushed. He gets away. He can run it in. He's down to the five, and he's down to the four-yard line. 
Alabama has one timeout left, and they take it with eight seconds. Fourth down and goal. This is it. Movement. Lewis is hit. Penn State's offside. He falls in the end zone. Incomplete. Penn State was Incomplete. Offside. Penn State will win the game. No, no. Penn State was offside. I thought the offensive line moved. Maybe. We'll see. People are on the field. I thought Penn State, unless the offensive line moved. The penalty is he, on Penn State. On Penn State. Alabama will get another chance. This is it. Pitch. No, he Penn State them. holds, and Penn State wins. Steve Sefta, come on a blitz. They did it. That's the same play. They ran two big plays, almost got in. I would second guess Perkins on that one. They came back to the well once too often, and Lady Luck smiled the last time on Penn State. The Crimson Tide had been ranked number three in the nation, but Penn State upset them 34-28. After a 17-6 victory at Syracuse, Penn State next had to play the number five ranked West Virginia Mountaineers, and again the Lions pulled an upset. West Virginia was undefeated. Thought this was the year they were gonna get us. And they had to wait till 84 for that, but in, uh, uh, we did some things very, very well. And I mean, one play that, that really was a great play was Kevin Bowes, 57-yard touchdown run. And again, Kevin had, uh, turned out to be one of the premier punt return people in the country, uh, almost as good as Suffolk was. The Lions broke it open in the fourth quarter to win 41-23. At Boston College, things didn't go as well for Penn State. Doug Flutie's pass for Brian Brennan was tipped by defensive back Mark Bruhan right back to tailback Troy Statford who had a gift 67-yard touchdown score. The Eagles built a 21-0 lead and won 27-17. Next, Joe Paterno welcomed his alma mater, Brown, to Beaver Stadium. John Williams' 61-yard touchdown typified Penn State's big play offense in a 38-21 victory. And we beat a Notre Dame football team 34-30. Uh, and had to do it in the last quarter. The lead had already changed hands five times when Penn State got the football back in the final minute. Stray. Going over the middle, right up from Domingo. 20, 15, he's out of the ball, he's out of the nine yard line. Deep Domingo. Two plays later, Penn State guessed an inside blitz was coming. The call was a rollout. Third down and goal from the eight yard line. Penn State trailing by three points. I think they'll bootleg it out to the side of the two wide receivers. Slot right, Mumford is in a tailback. Here he comes. Here's the bootleg. He's got room to run. Final, Penn State 34, Notre Dame 30. In the annual rivalry with Pitt, Penn State took advantage of Panther fumbles and a couple of long passes to Kenny Jackson to take a 21-10 lead. The Pitt quarterback, John Jimmy tossed his second and third touchdown passes of the game to Bill Wallace, and Pitt was ahead by three points with a minute 15 to play. Looking, throwing over the middle to Dozier. Tries to get outside to the 40, but that will never be enough even to attempt a field goal. The game is only six. Nobody was open downfield. It'll be third down. 16 yards to go for a first down. Frank, looking, throwing deep in the sideline. It is caught by Dozier, and he's out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Six seconds to play. Now, does Penn State dare try to run a play? Strang, the ball is tipped by a pit defender, and Dozier's there on the sideline to catch it. You see it's a good catch, 
coach stays in bounds and falls out of bounds. Six seconds had inadvertently been run off the clock, so the coaches were informed that the clock was not correct. I've been involved in a lot of bizarre endings to football games, but I imagine the pit game of 83 was probably had the most bizarre ending that we've ever been involved in. Uh, the, the officials had to, had to rewind the clock. Uh, there was some confusion as to whether Dozier was out of bounds on our last drive. Uh, I knew that the I knew that the official had to remount the the the, uh, the clock. Uh, the television cameras caught me smiling on the sideline as if I knew something I didn't know. I was laughing because the fans thought the game was over, and I knew we had four or five seconds left and, and, and had a chance to, to at least tie it. A lot of people have asked me, you know, you, your philosophy has always been you go for the win, and ordinarily that's true. I, I would go for the win. But in that particular game, we had about 15 or 16 yards to go. I only had one play left. Uh, it was 15 or 16 yards to get a touchdown. And when you're that close, it's almost impossible to get the ball in from that distance. Uh, and, and if I had had a play that I thought had any kind of a chance to get in there, I would have, we would have used it. But uh, we didn't. And I felt our kids had worked so hard to, to come back, uh, had put together such a great drive. Uh, I, I, didn't want to, I, I didn't want them to come away without anything. So we went for the field goal, and uh, Nick kicked it, thank goodness. It was a bizarre ending, uh, but I think we got the best we could out of it. And then we beat a fine Washington team in the lower bowl. Didn't, they, the only touchdown they got against us was on a punt return. We, we, we really played well defensively in that particular game. So even though we struggled, it, in a lot of ways it was a rewarding season. It's always nice to see kids uh, come back. It's always nice to see them kind of hold hands and say, hey, come on, we can make something out of this season uh, if we really work at it. And, and that's the impression I have of the 82 football team. The 1984 season was an enigma for me. Uh, at times we looked like a, we were going to be a great football team. We had started off extremely well. We beat a, a, an outstanding Iowa team, which was healthy, when we beat them out at Iowa. Then we went into the Meadowlands and Texas annihilated us, just physically whipped us every which way. Then we came back and beat an outstanding Maryland team. And then, uh, then we lost again, and then we, we, we ended up, we'd win one, lose one. Uh, we, we lost to West Virginia, come home and beat BC. Uh, and then we ended up, of course, losing the last two to Notre Dame and Pitt and, uh, so decisively. The thing that makes me so frustrated is to, be, is to look back and look at the films of one game and then look at the films of another game, and it's almost like watching two different football teams. And that's the way the season went, up and down, up and down, as if I was playing with a yo-yo. The yo-yo started on an upswing as Rutgers came to Beaver Stadium for the season opener. Former Penn State offensive coordinator Dick Anderson was on the visitor's sideline now as the new head coach of Rutgers. He watched Lion tailback D.J. Dozier get the season off to a good start. The way draw, Dozier got a hole, 35, 30, 25, 20. Penn State Sports Medicine coordinator Jim Hochberg's son, Rusty, was the Rutgers quarterback. He kept the Scarlet Knights in the game until the Lion pass rush caused a safety. Penn State went on to win 15-12. The second game of the season was at Iowa. Late in the game, the Lions were trying to hang on to a slim lead. We played so well in spots, particularly when they, they, it was fourth and one, and they had to make the play. We made a big play. We made something happen for us in that game. This could be the football game. Two minutes and five seconds to play. Penn State leading by a field goal. Fourth down and a yard to go for a first down. 
motion. Here's a pitch wide, and it's going to be close. Herman may have been stopped short. Penn State has held them on defense. Fourth and one, they missed it by half a yard. Penn State upset Iowa 20 to 17. Back home against William and Mary, David Clark had a big day in the Lions' 56-18 victory. The Lions were 3-0, but then they went to the Meadowlands to play Texas. Penn State wasted most of its opportunities. Trey, delayed looking, play. throwing deep in the end zone. Washington's open and is overthrown. Meanwhile, Texas made the big plays. Third down, nine. Russell Hayes coming out of the game. Go boy, Bryant split wide to the right. See if Penn State comes with a blitz, or if Texas even wants to throw this deep in their territory. Here's the fake. Got a man wide open. Harris, he's got it. 50, 45, 40. They won't catch him. 20, 10, 5, touchdown. William Harris, the tight end, and 80. Longhorns won 28-3. When we played Maryland, we knew we were going to be in for a tough football game. We knew Maryland had a very explosive offense, uh, and they have a very difficult defense because they play a wide pack of six, and we don't see a lot of it. Uh, and I, th I really thought going into the game that this was going to be one of those bond burners, and that's the way it turned out. Penn State built a 25-11 lead with Doug Strang TV passes to Rocky Washington and Tony Mumford. Maryland came back with a 45-yard touchdown pass, and with less than two minutes to play, Alvin Blunt pulled the Terrapins to within a point. Maryland went for the two-point conversion to win. When they went for two points, at the end of the football game, it's one of those things, you're looking up in the sky and saying, hey, one more favor, good Lord, one more. And it worked out that they, they went for it, and they made that. Made a good play. They used a two-point play we expected them to use. So in that sense, we were we were we felt pretty good about having our kids prepared for that play. But it was obviously it was a big play to ball game. Penn State won 25-24. Against Alabama, however, the Lions were shut out for the first time in the regular season since 1966. Nick Cacciatano missed two first-half field goal attempts, while Alabama made field goal attempts of 53 and 23 yards in the second half. A win over Syracuse featured a 58-yard run by Dozier. Counter play to Dozier. Spin! What a move! 50, 45, 40. He's gone. They'll never catch him. 20, 50, 10, 5. Touchdown, Penn State. D.J. Dozier. Dozier got loose again the following week at West Virginia when the Mountaineers were in a blitz. West Virginia would come back in the fourth quarter with Paul Woodside's 47-yard field goal and Pat Randolph's 22-yard run to take a 10-point lead. Now it was Penn State's turn to come back. And the blitz. Draw play. Wide open to Smith. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Penn State. There are no flags. Steve Smith, a 24-yard touchdown run. 9-0-1 to play in the football game, and we've got a football game. In the final minute, quarterback John Schaefer had a final chance to move the Lions. First and ten. Schaefer, he can't have a sack here. Over the middle. It's caught at the 26. The clock will stop. 54 seconds to play. Eric Hamilton, his first catch. First and ten. Penn State at the West Virginia 26. Well, at least whatever happens, win or lose, they're finding out they got a quarterback and they're finding out they got a passing game. Absolutely. Schaefer now. With 49 seconds, first and 10. Schaefer, he's rushed over the middle. Intercepted! Holly! West Virginia beat Penn State 17-14 for the first victory in the series since 1955. There was a lot of celebrating in Morgantown that night. 
game against Boston College was a game of big plays. The only question was which team would get to make the last one. Draw play to Bell. First down to the 35. Room to the 40. 45. 50. He may go. The 30. He's gone. 15. 10. 5. Did they give him the touchdown? Yes. Touchdown. Ken Bell. Strain. Rolling out. He's throwing deep in and it's going to be caught. Touchdown. Herb Bellamy. BC at their own 33. Big third down conversion. Flutie. Looking deep, got a man wide open. It is caught. 30, 25, Darren Flutie to the 20, 15 and down, near the 13-yard line. Dozier, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, he's gone. Touchdown, Penn State, D.J. Dozier. But after all those big plays, Penn State's offense won the game by grinding away the final four minutes while Doug Flutie watched helplessly on the sidelines. The Lions upset BC 37-30. I think maybe after we beat BC and we were six and three and we've beaten three outstanding football teams in Maryland, BC and Iowa, that we that I kind of got soft. Uh, that maybe we were running out of gas. We were a very young football team. And I started to take it easy on them in practice. And I think a, a mental softness set in. And, and, uh, and we just didn't play particularly well. The yo-yo spun down for the final two games of 1984. At Notre Dame, Irish tailback Alan Pickett scored four times in the first half. And Notre Dame stunned Penn State 44-7. to And Pittsburgh, disappointed with their 2-7-1 record, took it out in Penn State as John Jimmy passed to Bill Walls for a pair of 29-yard touchdowns en route to a 31-11 victory. Just finished talking about the 82, 83, and 84 seasons, and in conclusion as to what happened during those three years, let me let me give you a personal feeling about the thing. The 82 season obviously was, a lot of people would say, the greatest season in Penn State's history. I'm not sure about that, but it was a year we won our national championship, and it was a culmination of a lot of work, a lot of hopes, a lot of dreams, and a lot of people just kind of let it all hang out after we did it. We came back in 83, <coughs> and I. Here again, I, I, after we had a legitimate shot to win the national championship in 78, I didn't think we did a good job coaching in 79. That's not the case in 83. I think we just missed a little bit in 83 to having a good football team. And, but it was, again, the beginning of, of, of reorganizing, the beginning of putting people in the right place, uh, the beginning of trying to, 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 to regroup so that we could make another legitimate shot at a national championship run. And if you look at Penn State history, uh, we about every three or four years, we're right in the thick of the national championship fight. And that's about where I think we are after coming off the 84 season. So that's it for Great Moments in Penn State Football, Volume 3. For head coach Joe Paterno, I'm Jimmy Cephalo. Thanks and goodbye. <laughs>